guys, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and I'm so happy that you clicked on this video. I just love making these uh, cuddle bears. Um, I, I just, uh, I've sold a lot of them, I've given them as gifts um, and I call them cuddle bears because little hands hold them and cuddle them and you know I just think there's no better name for them so in in my videos they're called the cuddle bear so I hope you enjoy making them um, I have changed uh, the ears up um, from other videos that you have seen so if you prefer a smaller ear something a little different then then look at some of the other videos for the ear ideas but I just love this idea this video uses um, the 48 needle Addy as well as the 22 needle Addy. Um, I've used Craft Smart yarn um, in all of them and it uses just a very little bit of the ball. So um, maybe a quarter, one third of the ball at most. So enjoy making them, have fun, and just uh, post your, your creations on some of the websites or the group sites that we're all on. We'd love to see them. Okay, happy knitting my friends. Okay, so let's start our project. Let's take your working yarn, the color that you're going to use for your bear, and the first thing we want to do is measure out across from your um, one end of your Addy King to the other end, and then do that again, three and four. And you're going to do that and just cut that off because we're going to need this piece of um, yarn as a drawstring um, between the head and the body so we'll use that later but we want to cut it off first so that we don't have to re have to un um, cut, cut our yarn in the middle of our project so go ahead and do that and then you're going to bring your last white needle and your first black needle in line with your yarn guide now you'll notice that I colored this red pin that's in between the two with a black felt marker I say that in almost all I probably will say it in all my videos because um, it's just one of the easiest things you can do and it is so incredibly helpful when it comes to um, watching your your um, row go around. So uh, you know when on your last row of a color change or the last row that you need in your project, you see it coming around and you don't pass it and you don't have to do any backing up to um, un undo stitches. So I find it very, very helpful. So the first thing we're going to do is a long tail cast on. So with your working yarn, you're going to put put it behind the first um, black needle in front of the next and all the way around. We're going to do that for all 46 needles. Okay, and about halfway around is when I set my counter to zero. So that it, when, it, when it clicks on one, when I start my project, I know I'm working on that row. Um, I like to know what rows I'm working on rather than what row I'm finished. Okay, so then I've got it around the last black white one. I'm going to put it into my yarn guide. I'm going to make sure if it's a new ball that there's some slack on there. Okay, and close your yarn guide. I've got my, my counter set to zero. We're going to do 16 rows for the head. So let's crank until we get to 16 rows. I just finished a major project on my... Um, Addy 22 and so this feels just like so much different. The Addy 22 you can just make your circles go so quick you get on this one right after and it feels like it takes so much to make a circle but <laughs> but it's nice to be back on it. I love the projects we can make um, when we have both machines and we will need both machines for this project. So that's seven. Clicked on eight so I know I'm working on row eight. Nine. I'm going to stay with you until uh, I get to 16 so I can show you what I do next. 11. This yarn is just like a dream in this machine. 12. 13. I'm working on row 13. 14. 15. I need one more row. So it clicked on 16, I've got to finish that row. I'm watching that black marker come around so I know I'm at the end. Um, I need to now put my guide yarn in for the gathering of the neck. Um, so what I do is I open my yarn feeder, I take the yarn out, I put it between the last white and the first black. I pick up my yarn ball um, and I put it in the center of my machine. I'm going to go ahead and take off the yarn that I or take the yarn that I cut off in the beginning. I'm going to take the end. I'm going to put it in my yarn guide. Close the latch. I'm going to grab those two. This is the the piece of yarn that we're going to use to um, to gather close to the bottom of the 
where, where the neck is, where the neck and the body um, meet. So this first part that we did here is the head, okay? So you're gonna just go around one time. Before I get all the way around, I reset my counter to zero so that when I s start my body, then I have accurate count of the, of the rows, okay? So I'm going to take it right to, um, to between the last white needle and the first black needle, and I'm going to put that in there. Then I'm going to grab this yarn that I had in the center, and I'm going to pull it out. Being careful, one little trick here, is you want to make sure that this, um, the yarn that you the, that the yarn that you are taking to put back in the feeder goes over this one, so you want it over top, so that when when you pull this, it, it's catching that um, stitch as well. Close your yarn guide, and you need 43 rows for the body. So um, I've reset my counter to zero again. If you didn't and you just want to do the math, that's fine too. But you just keep going around for 43 more rows, and then when we um, get that done, we're going to add. Um, waist yarn to close the the bottom with a flat seam okay so finish your 43 rows and meet me back okay I'm just uh, going to finish up my last row my 43rd row I can see that black marker coming around so I'm going to stop right there I'm going to cut my working yarn open my yarn guide put the end between my last white and my first black and then I'm going to grab my waste yarn in a contrasting color. We need waste yarn at the end of this project to close the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to put that, attach that. I generally, as a rule, oops, now of course I've got yarn that's got a knot in it, but here we go. As a rule, I do uh, seven or eight rows of waste yarn. You can do as many or as little as you're comfortable with. I just find if I do any less than that, I'm risking it unraveling and then then it's sad, <laughs> especially at the end, because when you use waste yarn at the end of your project, it unravels very easily. It's the waste yarn that you use at the beginning of your project that um, is harder to take off. Okay, so I'm not sure how many rows that is, but I'm going to do a couple more. It's getting tight. I was holding it a little tight there. There we go. All right, I'm going to end on this one. I think it's about five or six, but... Um, I can tell this yarn's going to give me some, some grief because it's got some knots in the ball. So I'm going to end it there. And I'm going to cut my yarn, put it in the middle, close my yarn guide, and then I'm going to remove my project. Okay, so all you've got to do is, is rotate the whole um, barrel twice and it comes off. Okay, sometimes it sticks a little bit. That's okay, you just help it off. just needs a little extra guidance and that's totally fine this is where it was sticking on me so that's that's the reason why but um no problem just work slowly at it and you'll get it off okay and i have a couple more that are around there that didn't come off so let's make it around and this is one reason why i use more rows because when it does that it sometimes will loosen the rows like that so um, i'm glad that happened actually so you could see so seven seven or more rows and then you've still got enough um that it's that you're safe uh, and it's not going to make it to the end row here and start unraveling your project. Okay, so take your project off just like that. Then you're going to give it a stretch in all directions just to line up those stitches so they're nice and uniform and even and smooth and beautiful. And then we're going to um, put this aside and we're going to make the rest of the parts that we need for the bear before we do the assembly. And then I'll show you how to close up this and assemble it um, when all the parts are made. Okay, all right. Okay, so now we're going to start on the parts. We're gonna make the head first. So you need to grab your uh, working yarn, this, the, right, the main color that you've used. You're gonna put it around behind the back of the first black needle in front and then behind. We're doing the long tail cast on for this, okay? Um, we will not use waste yarn for this. We're going to just uh, cast on and cast off um, so that we have a drawstring on both ends. Okay, so we're almost around. Coming around, I'm going to set my yarn guide to zero before I hit that end point. Insert it into the yarn feeder. And I'm going to crank out 16 rows. This is Craft Smart yarn and it's the taupe color. Um, and it's just honestly my favorite one for this machine because it glides in this machine like nobody's business. It's just, I never have an issue with it. Watch, I'm gonna have it now that I've spoken it, but <laughs> but uh, it's uh, just working up. It's just so beautifully 
Um, could also be because it was wound nicely in the ball. Sometimes you get balls that are, are really tight and, and they've got knots in them and then you're fighting the whole time. But this one just seems to be so beautiful. Um, as all of them have been that I've used in this color. Okay, I'm row eight. I'm just gonna stay with you because I'm only gonna do 16. I'll just speed it up a little bit here. Working on row 10. 11. These um, bears are beautiful little gifts. If you um, get invited, your kid gets invited to a birthday party and you haven't got time to uh, go out and buy anything, whip up a little bear. It doesn't take long at all and it's just such a special, beautiful little gift. 14. 15. And my last row, 16. And I'm going to finish that row. I'm watching for that black marked peg to come around and there it is. So I'm going to stop. Then I'm going to cut off, oh, I don't know, maybe a foot and a half of, of tail. And I'm going to put it in between the last white and the first black peg. And I'm going to do my long tail cast off. So I've got my, my needle thread threaded. If you don't have these needles, go out and buy them. <laughs> this is a metal needle with, needle with a hard plastic end um, for easy threading. Uh, you can get them in a package of three. I think they're like $3.50 here in Canada. Um, I got mine at Walmart, but I know Michael's might have them or maybe some of the stores that you shop in at Joann's or um, Hobby Lobby in the States might have them. Um, or Amazon for sure has them. So uh, check them out and, and it's well worth the purchase price. So um, I'd encourage you to pick some of those up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off the first couple of, of stitches. I always do three or four before I unwind a little bit more. Just like that. And then I'm going to do a few more. And take them off just like that holding them on the needle with my thumb okay threading it through and i'm going to do that all the way around my, sh my machine until i get to the last one okay i'm coming around to the last section here 37 38 39 40 41. sometimes those last few needles don't want to fall down over these little red pins um, and if that happens here, I'm gonna, it didn't happen here, but if it does happen where they come up on, on this white um, needle here and, and it's not over these red pins, so it's hard to get off, just back up your machine a little bit, push it down with your needle and then come back around and it'll fall over those red pegs. Those are two red needles and then you'll have no problem. Okay, so you pull it off, then you're going to pull that a little bit tight, stretch out your project just like you would um, any other thing that you take off your machine. Okay, and then you're going to close up this end just like that you're going to tighten it I put on a smaller uh, needle of course for this and then I go around and I tighten it um, in here I just give it a few extra rounds of, um, of uh, tightness there it's just so I make sure it doesn't come undone I give it a slip knot and then I stick my yarn through there through the hole just like this and I go ahead and I start on this other side Okay, so I'm just doing this quickly under the camera here because I think that this is something that you probably know how to do, so I don't want to, um, to take up too much of your time by showing you this. So I pull this like this. So you can see it's starting to form a little, a little head. And I'm gonna go down and I'm going to stuff it and come back and close it up with you. Okay, so see you soon. Go ahead and do that and meet me back when you get your stuffing in there. Okay, so I've got my smaller needle um, that came in that package attached and that's how I close up the end here. Um, so just wanted to show you that so that you see it comes it comes as a set. But so I've got my other end all nice and, and tight. Then I, I put the um, end of that working yarn in through the center here and it's right in there. I just add it as part of the stuffing. Um, you can cut it off, it's whatever you like. And then I'm gonna just keep stuffing and I find that the more stuffing I get in there, I just wind this end around my, my finger so that it, it keeps it from getting really wide and, and making, it just makes it easier to, to form the ball. Okay, so it's in there and I'm gonna close it up just a little bit to see if I like that. Okay, I'm finding there's not enough in there, so I'm going to take some more. I don't want it too big. Um, you can get it um, really tight and firm, um, but I think that takes away from the look of it. Um, I, for, for the little kids, I want it to be a nice round head, but I want it to be soft. Um, not, not so 
full that it's that it's hard for them to hold okay so that's how I prefer to make mine so that's all in there I'm gonna just squeeze it up okay it's yeah I think that's good actually I think I'm gonna leave it like that that's just enough it almost feels like there's not enough in there um, and that's that's actually how I like it um, when you're when you're guessing to yourself thinking to yourself okay like is that enough I think that's enough maybe I'll add more you're probably at the right place <laughs> so then I take this darning needle and this is how I how I closed the other end too okay you just go through these stitches and I always go around two or three times just so that I can um, make sure it's it's secured and it's not going to come apart on the little guys okay and this is the part that's hidden so if if you you know have to go down a few stitches like what I just did because it was really tight um, that's okay or if um, if you you don't get it just 100% closed but very close to it then then uh, that's okay too because it's not the outside so I went around once I'm gonna just go around one more time just to secure it and this is what I do um, with the other side too and it's how I close my beanies as well um, and it seems to work just gives it that extra stability and again these needles are metal and they're completely hard so um, you just they're just so beautiful to work with okay then I'm going to make a little knot do it again here I told you I was gonna make all the parts before we came back to uh, to assemble <laughs> and I uh, went ahead and did this anyways but that's okay um, so we got the head done it looks nice and round you just squish it and play with it until you get it where you want it that's perfect I think that's gonna be perfect and we will put that inside of our body um, after we make our arms okay and our ears all right so now we're ready to do our ears and our arms but we're going to start with the ears and to do that we're going to take our working yarn we're going to put it do a long tail cast on so I usually leave a little bit longer of a tail in there um, for sewing up at the end so maybe eight to ten inches should be good and do your long tail cast on switch my counter to zero before I get all the way around I'm going to crank out ten rows And one more. I see that black marked red peg coming around, so I know I'm at the end. I'm gonna cut off a fairly long tail again, about 10 inches or so. Then I'm gonna open my yarn guide, thread my needle, and I'm gonna do a long tail cast off, okay? Just like we did with the head. Take off a few at a time. And I'm not gonna stay, I'm not going to uh, record this whole thing because we've done it already. All right, I'll just get you started here. Now I can crank around a few more and take them off. All the way around until you get them all off, okay? And once you do that, once you have it all removed, you're gonna go ahead and make a second ear, all right? And when you're done that, um, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so now we're gonna make the arms together. Uh, very easy to do. For this uh, project, for part of the project, we're gonna use the small Addy again, the 22 needle Addy. And um, you're going to do a long tail cast on with a waist yarn at the end, um, at the bottom of your project. Now, um, if ever you're doing a project and you only need one side to have waist yarn, and if it doesn't matter which side it is, always choose the end because that's the side that, that is the easiest to pull off. Um, the, the long tail cast, the, the beginning of your project, if you choose waist yarn for that, um, that's the harder end to take it off. So that's just a little tip um, for you if, if, um, if you didn't know that already. Okay, so let's bring around our needles and get them in place. We're going to do a long tail cast on. Leave a little bit of, of yarn in the, in the machine again, maybe 10 inches or so, so that you uh, have it for sewing if you need it, okay? And we're going to just go around. Set your counter to zero part way around so it's ready when you get there. And let's crank out 20 rows, and when you've done that, I'll see you at near the end, okay? Okay, I'm ready to start row 20. 
I see that black marker coming around, so I know I'm close to the end. I'm going to cut off um, another little bit longer tail than you normally do. Not that much longer. And then we're gonna grab our waist yarn. We're gonna insert that into our yarn guide and into the center. And we're going to crank out seven or eight rows. Okay, so now that you're done that, I'm going to put a little slip knot in here just because I didn't do that after, I usually remember to do that after about three or four rows just so it doesn't, un, um, doesn't unravel. And so then now that we've done that, I'm gonna cut off the end there, open my guide, insert it in the middle there. I went over one little too far, but that doesn't matter on the waist yarn, that's totally fine. And then I'm gonna just crank and remove my project. That came off so wonderfully easy. And then I'm going to stretch it out like I always do for everything I take off of my machines. Set it aside and go ahead and make a second one. Okay, so we have all our body parts. We have the body with the head that's um, attached to it. We've got the, the uh, inside head part here. Now you see, if I hold this up close, you can see that there's white in there, right? The, the filling. That's why I like to do a double layer for the head because... Um, I do it for any project that I have, like any any amigurumi or anything that I make because um, I, I just don't like to see the, the white stuffing show through. We've got our two arms and we've got our two ears. Now we're going to um, put these together the way they need to be and uh, assemble the whole thing. But before we do that, let's close the end of, of our tube, okay? Okay, so I take my two favorite uh, stitch markers, which are bobby pins, which if uh, you know me and you know my videos, then you'll know that's what I use all the time. Um, I'm going to look for the waist yarn and see which stitch that's coming out of, and I'm going to put a stitch marker in there. Then I'm going to go, oops, I pulled that a little too tight, but or too too much, but that's okay. It'll, uh, it'll be fine. And then I'm going to go over to where this... Uh, working yarn is coming out and it looks there's two stitches there it looks like it's coming out of this bottom one but you're going to take the top one because that's the top row okay so then I make sure that both of my um, yarn work my uh, yarn ends are outside of my project I'm going and I have a video on this too so I'm doing this fast but you can look up my video on how to close a straight tube here too but uh, with a straight edge but then I'm going to count around I know there's 46 stitches on here and you can see them very easily because I used a contrasting color of, of waste yarn which is um, a must do when you're doing a project like this and so because I want exactly half I'm going to count 23 so one two three four five oops one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Twenty-three. So this is twenty-four. I'm gonna put my hook in twenty-four. Okay. And then I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna grab twenty-three and I'm gonna put it through that loop on the hook. Then I'm gonna go down, grab that next stitch, bring it through, go up, grab the next stitch, bring it through, and I do this all the way across. Okay. I'm just gonna do it fast here because um I do have a video on it, and you can slow this down or, or pause and rewind it if you like. All right, oops, that one got. Yeah, and when, you, when you're by yourself and you're not talking to the camera or talking to somebody, um, you can count these as you go. Make sure you've picked up all 46 stitches because if you miss one, it'll unravel your row. Um, at a, once, once you've closed this, then whichever stitch you miss, missed will unravel all the way down. If that ever does happen, don't pull your work apart. Um, there is a way to fix that. And uh, I will be putting up a video on that at a later time too. All in due time. Lots of ideas for videos. Just have to find the time to do them all. <laughs> so keep watching. Maybe hit the subscribe button and the notification. And uh, then whenever I place a new video up, you'll be able to, to see it. And you won't miss anything. Um, I sure do appreciate... Uh, your support and I appreciate the fact that um, you trust me to show you how to do different things and that you're watching my videos already. I can tell that um, they're being watched and, and I'm just very thankful for that. I, I think that um, this uh, knitting community that, that we're all mostly a part of is just such a wonderful community. Uh, just such friendly people and you know we're just loving our craft together and it's just a positive environment so thank you for choosing to click on my videos here as well okay so I'm going to pull up on my bobby pin 
take that stitch. Sometimes these stitches at the end get very tight, not in this case, but sometimes they do. And that's why these stitch markers are perfect, okay? Then I'm going to yarn over and bring it through the hoop, hoping that I stayed on camera this entire time, okay? Then I'm going to remove my waist yarn. Okay, waist yarn was easily removed and we have a beautiful bottom to our project. And all I'm going to do is, I won't do this on camera, but I'm gonna thread this and I'm going to, going to weave it in and hide it. Um, and that's what you'll do as well. Go to the other end and we're going to just go to the inside here and you're gonna find your drawstring. Um, this is the string that we added after row 16. And what you're gonna do, I like to first of all, make sure that this is all straight and so that my sides are, are fairly even here. And then you're going to, to just pull on this, just like that, and it's going to gather the inside. See how easy that is? Don't pull too tight because or too hard because if you break this this um, drawstring, then you're going to have to go in and and uh, and uh, do it manually with with the needle and thread and, and make your own um, gather there. But this is just the easy way to do it. So I'm going to cut this off because of course it gets a lot longer as you do that. I'm going to tie it. Now, only go until you feel that it's getting tight. You don't want to close that. You just want to make it so that, so that it's cinched for the neck. But I don't close it any tighter than it wants to go. Um, and we give it a two or three knots. Tuck that little yarn ends in there. And you'll see on the outside, this is how it looks. Okay, what I do is I fiddle with it a bit so that, so that these side seams here are somewhat in the middle. So if you if you get this, put this back and you see here, okay, there's a bunch of bunching there and there's bunching here, of course. But if if your bunching was more on one side than on the other, I've knotted it now, so it doesn't work. But if, you're, if your knotting was, before you tie it, make sure that it's fairly even so that when you place your arms, you're gonna have them um, in, a good, in a good place. If this is all bunched up more on this side than it is on this side, then your arms are gonna be close together like this and that's not a nice look. So, so you've got that done, okay? And now you see that this drawstring up here is for our head, okay? So you're going to pull that a little bit, get that going. You're gonna grab your head. There it is, you're going to place it inside that little pocket there. You can see how this is coming together, hey? Pull it up a little bit. Pull that yarn end. Again, if it's really long, cut it off so you're not having to fight with it. I'm going to thread the needle here. And I'm not gonna pull it so tight that it closes because then it'll break, okay? I'm gonna work it around this way in order to do that. So I'm going to go through those stitches, pull just a little bit. If you pull it really tight, um, at first, Without doing this, you're gonna risk breaking your, your yarn end and then that's actually not good. <laughs> then that, that will make you cry. So you don't wanna do that. You just wanna gradually go just around like this. Oops, lost my end off my needle. Until you tighten it, just like I showed you previously, until you tighten it and then have it closed. Take your time, make sure it's it's uh, it's nice and snug in there, but go slowly, take your time so you don't um, break your yarn end as you're doing it. Okay, so I'm gonna let you finish that and then I'll see you back. Okay, so now we're going to work on the ears. I've closed up the one end like, um, like what we've done with, with the uh, other parts. Closed up the one end, now I'm gonna turn it over and I'm going to close up the other end. Just like that. So we've got like a small little circle there. So I've got this other end sticking out of there. I'm gonna trim this one because it's a little... Don't trim it too short though because you have to use it to sew up. So I'm actually changing my mind on that. I'm going to... I just cut off just a very little end because it was quite excessively long. Okay, so now I'm going to close this end just like I closed the other end. Hoping to stay in the middle of the camera. That's the hardest part when you're recording is to get the lighting right and to, to stay in the middle of your screen because um, you can't always see your, you, you can set your video camera, but then you can't always see what you're doing in the camera. You just have to hope that you're actually in there. But um, 
for the most part, I get it. My apologies for the last couple of, of, um, of screens that you're watching on this video because I kind of slid down like this a little bit when I was closing it up, so my apologies. Okay, so now I have that one um, snug. I'm going to tie a little knot here. Okay, one will do. And then what I do is I just stretch it out a little bit, get it all, make sure that it's in a circle. Then I just pick a section and I go up so that I can bring my needle out at the side, okay? Doesn't matter which end you do that on. I'm gonna wind this up just a little bit, stick it on the inside, or you can cut it off, whatever you like. Then you're gonna fold your ear in half with this tail end on the, on the end corner, okay? And so now I'm going to take this end and you see the, the bumps on the stitches are right here. All these little bumps. I'm gonna just seam in between them. So I'm gonna go up through there and then come down on this side through those ones right there. Then I'm gonna go back up on this side and down. All the way to, all the, way to the end, doing the same motion. Okay, so I've made it around and um, I've got my yarn end still attached on the end. I've tied a little knot there so it's good. Then I just usually play with it. I try to push down on the center here just a little bit so that it's, it's flatter and you can get it flat enough um, for, for sewing on. So we're gonna do that with the second one. My poor little needle here. I've had it for like six months and it just finally, finally broke. This little plastic end as I was using it just pulled out of the little socket. So I have to say goodbye to this little fella and go buy myself some new ones. <laughs> I'm sure I won't get out of the store without a ball of yarn in my hand either. But anyways, now I'm going to just directly go right to the, um, to the arm. So what you're going to do is you're going to close this up the same way you closed up the, uh, the straight edge on your, on your body. So you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to go off camera, um, and do that and then come back. So you're gonna put your bobby pins in and you're going to just seam it up with your crochet hook. Okay, we'll see you back when you're done that. Okay, once you've got your waist yarn removed, you're going to thread your needle. And you're going to pull this other end tight. Close it off just the same way that we've been doing all along. Just by, you know what, you, you actually don't need to do a full circle on this one because um, it holds really, really well. Um, I just put a little, little knot in there, in the middle. Just one simple little one because we're gonna sew up the side. So uh, this uh, needle, I'm not used to this needle because I use the other one all the time, like I said. But anyways, we're going to um, replace that just as soon as we can. <laughs> but now now you've got your hand arm like this. Now, of course, this is the end we're going to attach to the body. But I want you to to go to the corner and find um, the, the very side with the Vs going down, the wide part of the V going down. Then fold it in half and do the other the same thing on the other side now if um if it's twisted a little bit and, and it looks like your row is going to be the one where the where the um points are at the bottom then just give it a little bit of a twist and tuck the rest inside inside there but i just find a row that i think will work don't have to be perfect with this and then i tuck in i tuck in the rest just like that get my rows lined up then I'm going to take my uh, my yarn end that's, let me get this one out of the way so you don't get confused, that's on my needle, and I'm going to just, right like this, so the tip of this just closed, just like that. And then I'm gonna go into these next two stitches. See, it turned already on me, so I'm going to, I'm going to find that again. It's this one right here. I want the, I want the wide part of, of the stitch going down. A little finicky to start out with, but it's it's not impossible. Okay, so I'm going to grab two bars on there, go across, insert my hook, and grab those two bars. Go across. Where I came out, I'm going to go in, and I'm going to grab two more stitches, two more bars, just like that. 
I'm gonna keep it loose and then I'm gonna go across, stay on the same row and I'm gonna grab two more, keeping it loose for now. Then I'm going to just give this a slight turn so I can make sure I'm staying on that same row. And I'm gonna keep going all the way down. Now I've got about that big of a section done, so now I'm going to pull. I'm gonna squeeze this end here and I'm gonna pull. And you see how that comes nicely together? And then that V stays with the wide part down and it just lines up perfectly with all the other ones, okay? So I'm going to Continue that, making sure that I'm on the same row with the wide part of the stitch facing down, and I'm going to continue. I came out these two, so I'm or this one, so I'm going to pick up these two bars and these two. Now, if I keep it loose until I do five or six stitches, then it's easier for me to see. Okay, now that's twisted a bit, so I'm going to tuck that inside of there, and I'm going to make sure that it's proper. And then I'm going to pick up two bars on that side. Go across and pick up the two on this side. This is how you seam a, uh, a blanket together too if, you're, if you want a hidden seam um, where it doesn't look like, uh, like you've got panels, like you want to join your panels with a seamless join. This is how you do it. Okay, let's see here. Keep going. Got a Good chunk there, so now I'm gonna pull that again. See how beautiful that is? It just works, oh, just amazing. I love this, this way of joining. And I'm gonna keep going. Until I get to the top. And if you only have one bar left, then so be it. Then you just pick up the one bar. And pull that tight. See, look at that, it's just, it turns out just absolutely beautiful. You can't hardly even see where your seam is. So then you're going to take this other end that you had and you're gonna stuff it inside of your, your little arm there. Or cut it off, whatever you like, but I just stuff it in. And you've got your, your end there, so I'm just gonna sew up this side together, just like this. And I'm gonna go across and I'm gonna sew this all the way across. Trying not to move my hand so that I don't go off camera. It's so easily done. So again, my apologies for the times where I've kind of slid down and, and you weren't able to see very well. I hope that you still got the gist of it. If you didn't, send me, write us, uh, just make a comment and I'll try to answer it, okay? Um, there we go, so now you've got one arm done. Now, I'm going to, while it's in my hand and the camera's still rolling, I'm going to show you what I do next with, this, with the arms, okay? So I find my side that I, that I like the best for um, the front, and in most cases, they're exactly the same, so it really doesn't matter. But if you have a preference to which side you like better, that's good. I'm going to just adjust my camera and move it up one second. So how I put the arms on is I, I come to the, take my anim, my um, bear and I find the side just like this, okay? And I see that right there is, is the middle of the arm. So I don't wanna grab this stitch, I wanna grab right in the seam there as much as I can. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, whichever side I seamed up, which if you can figure out which side it was now, um, you take, uh, the, you put that in the back. So um, it was this side because my, my yarn's on the opposite side because I seamed across, but it's so hard to tell, it really doesn't matter. But if you can tell, put it in the back. So I'm gonna have this as my front of my bear. So I'm going to put my arm on the bear with the middle of this arm right in the middle of that seam. And then I'm going to seam across, okay? So now that I know it's like that, I'm gonna turn it so it's comfortable for me. and I'm going to find the neck seam. I'm going to insert my hook, pull it up. Then I take my needle, it's a little finicky, and I'm going to, especially to do it on camera, and I'm gonna go from the top through to the bottom and pull that through. Then I rotate this because I want to find the seam again, and I come up through the seam. I'm a knitter, not a sewer, but this is how I sew. <laughs> And then I come back around and then I go on the same side from the top to the other side 
and I seam that and I do that all the way across, having this seamed as close to that next seam as I possibly can. Okay, so go ahead and do that with both of your arms. Now that we have the arms on, we're gonna move ahead to the ears. I've already done one, um, just so you can see how I place them. But one thing I just wanted to point out that I do another little tip is that I leave all the tails hanging. I don't knot them up until I have everything placed because so often, I need to take it apart and replace something. So um, if you've knotted it and hidden your ends, it makes it all the all the harder. Okay, so we're gonna put the ears on much the same way or the same way that we put the arms on, but this is how I line it up. I will take my ear and I will go to the front of my arm and I'll hold it like that just so that they're just so that they're lined up, just like that. I want it on the edge, then I slide it up to the top and I go about four stitches down, okay? So if I look at it, that's perfect. Then I go about four stitches down. Might wanna put it back just a little bit in this case. Let's see here. Yeah, no, that was pretty, that was pretty good. So about four stitches down, and then I'm going to sew it on just like I sewed my arms on, going straight down, okay? so. Wherever I line it up, I'm going to go straight down, and that's how it's gonna end. Sewing it on the same way that I sewed on my arms, going through the bottom, and then you can turn it on its side because you know you're going straight down, and you got your arm as a guide. That other ear's in the way now. And then you're going to go in through your project, Oh, slipping, sorry. Then you're gonna go back underneath and go in through your project. And you're gonna do that all the way down so it's tight, okay? And then once it's on, we'll see you here. We'll see you back. Okay, so just to show you my process, that um, now that I've got that done, I've got these yarn ends hanging. Um, I like how my arms are placed. I like how everything looks there. If you turn around and look at the back, they came pretty close together back there. Um, so I would have never chosen that for the front. I, I don't like when the arms are squeezed together like that. So um, this is my front and that's how that looks. Um, I like how this ear is placed, but I actually don't like how this one is placed. I think it's too far back and it's a little too high. Um, well, maybe not too high, but this part here, is farther back than this one. This one seems to come around a little bit more. So I'm actually, that's why I don't tie, tie, tighten this off because I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to move it up about a row. Um, so, so then it looks more uniform. So I will do that and then I'll see you back. Now that looks better. And all I did was, was um, take it out halfway and then angle it up a little bit so that um, it was coming more to a point. Looks more like a, like a bear. Now, um, you can find the, the this cuddle this uh, Addy Bear pattern on several different um, YouTube sites, uh, and and uh, for the most part, the body is the same. Um, the arms are probably the same too. I can't remember if I if I changed those or not, but I did change the ears. These these are ears that I came up with um, because I liked the koala look, um, and my site is koala knits. So. Um, I hope you like those ears too, but if you don't prefer those ears, you can look for other patterns and, and copy the ears off of those instead. Okay, so now we're going to um, we're going to do the face, which is with a crochet hook. So um, if you don't crochet and you can't make the circle that I'm going to put there, you can make a smaller one of these ears, just don't fold it in half and sew it there if you want, and then do the rest of the stitching on top of that. Or you can just do the eyes and the mouth um, without the circle if, if you so desire but uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and crochet the um, circle that goes on there and I'm going to do it on camera it's very easy so uh, hopefully you'll be able to do that but first I'm because I like my placement now I'm going to hide all my ends okay so we are going to make our magic circle and in that magic circle we're going to single crochet eight single crochets okay got that Circle done, there we go, one, two, 
three. Now, if you have a hard time finding your first stitch, when you get about three done, go back in with your with your stitch marker and mark your first stitch. Um, I, I don't necessarily need to do that because I've done this enough times that I know where the first stitch is, but it is very, very helpful. Um, if, if you have, if you struggle with that, that's four, five, six, pull that a little bit tighter, seven, and eight. Okay, then I'm going to pull that um, yarn end really tight to close up the circle. Now, generally, I will carry it through and hide it that way, but um, in case some of you are, are, are learning this and, and trying to um, pick it up as I do it now, then I'm, I'm gonna hide it later. So that's my first stitch. I'm going to take my stitch marker out. I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, grab that yarn. I'm gonna slip stitch to join, and then I'm gonna chain one. Then that's my first stitch still. I'm gonna do two single crochets in that stitch and in every stitch around. Now again, if you need to use a stitch, stitch marker to mark your first stitch, go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna do two stitches in every stitch around and that will give me 16. Nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Don't let that, that uh, slip stitch and chain one fool you. Okay, so then you're going to insert your hook into that first stitch where your stitch marker is coming out. You're going to slip stitch to join and you're going to chain one. In that same space, you're going to chain or you're going to single crochet one and then in the next one you're going to do two. Again, if you need to mark that, go ahead and do it. So then in the next stitch, you're going to do one single crochet. This is an increase round, another increase round, and then two in the next stitch. One in the next two in the next, all the way around. We'll increase it to 24. Now I use the same circle on my um, bear, my beanies that I put a bare face on, and uh, I just do one extra increase row after, after this one. It's a bigger project, so it needs a bigger nose area. I'm using the Craft Smart Yarn in the Tweed. I love that, I love the, now I don't know what I just did. Uh, I love the flex in it, and uh, I think it just looks so good. If I'm doing like a pastel color project, um, like a pastel pink or pastel green or pastel yellow, I will not use this tweed color. I will use um, a white for this circle because it just it coordinates better. Um, for the warm tones, I use this. For the cool tones, I, I use the white. Now I'm going to slip stitch to the first stitch, and then I'm not going to chain one there. I'm I'm going to I'm going to yarn over. Well, it's like changing chaining one. Yarn over, um, bring it through the loop. Then I'm going to cut off about maybe a foot and pull it through and tighten that. Okay. And there I've got my circle. Beautiful circle. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this end on my um, yarn needle and I'm going to sew it around there so that I can tighten it, okay? Okay, so there's my circle and I started it. I've got it on and I'm just, uh, you know, I looked at my arms and I seen where the middle was about there. And so then I, I just put it on the face between the ears and moved it up just a little bit. I don't want it center on, on the face because, because that will be like center as from the bottom to here because then it will um, it'll look strange. You need to have it a little bit lower. Centered but lower. Centered this way, but a little bit lower this way, okay? And then um, what you do is you pick up the stitches and then you go under one of the stitches around the circle and pull. Pick up a stitch, pick up a stitch, and around. 
Don't make your stitches so big over here that you see all these lines coming across as, as you stitch. That doesn't look as nice. You want to hide them. So you go close to the circle, pick up the, the, um, the fabric from the bear, then you go up through, through that loop, just like that, all the way around. I love these cuddle bears. I just think that they're just so beautiful. Now they're called Addy Bears um, on pretty much any other YouTube site that you see. Um, I, I advertise them when I sell them as cuddle bears. Uh, most people wouldn't know what an Addy is. For us, we know what an Addy is and it's an easy way to find the video, which is great. But um, I, I promote them as cuddle bears. So go ahead and do that if, if, uh, if you like that idea as well. Because that's what they are. Little hands will take them and hold them and cuddle them. and. Uh, I mean, it's just an appropriate name for these little guys. Okay, so I'm almost around. I'm liking how that's looking. Okay, I'm going to go up into here and tie my knot there because then it'll be hidden by the black, black uh, nose that I put on there, okay? So, Rather than tie a knot there and see it, this, this won't be seen as easily. Then I'm going to take this thread yarn, put it through, pull it, snip it off, play with that a little bit, and there is my beginning stages of my face. Now I'm going to go get my black yarn thread my needle and I'll be back with you. My friends, we are almost there. We're going to put the face on now. So I just get a long piece of black um, yarn threaded on my, my large needle here. And I just poke it in the side of the head there. And I come up to, I'll show you, right? No, nope, little too far, right about there. So you see where the circle is in, the very center circle is in this nose. I wanna go to the next row up, right above it. <clears throat> that still wasn't perfect, so I'm gonna get it in a better spot here. There we go, that's where I want it. And I'm gonna bring it through. I work on the part that goes in a triangle like that first, okay? So again, there's the circle point of your nose. And you're gonna go up to the row that's right above it in right center with it <clears throat> then I go I just eyeball it I'm going to go about like that and across you can always add to it better to start out a little thin than a little thick because you can always add to the sides by thin I mean if I wanted to make it thicker I could always add rows here but I can't take away so um, I start about like that and then I Go back into that center. You know what? I'm going to change my needle. This one's too big. I'm sure missing my little needle that uh, had the end of its life today. <laughs> um, and I will, yeah, I mean, I used it, like I said, I use it all the time. So that's the one I usually use for this. So that other one was too big. Okay, so then we're going to just weave in and out like this. Don't have to go in any particular order. You're just going to do it till till you fill in that little triangle. Go back down, maybe go over here. You're gonna come up under the ridge of, of the side. Um, don't go higher than here, than here. Don't take it up to here and, and have your nose um, beyond this, this circle that you've got. I don't, I don't think it looks good if you do that. Um, I, I, I <clears throat> want to keep it as neat and professional looking as possible and I find that if we follow the perimeter of this circle, um, you're gonna have a beautiful result. Okay, I'm gonna put another one right there. Bring it down, keep going, until you get this center filled in. There we go. I guess I've made enough of these that I accurately measured um, how big to make the nose. But if it's off-centered, like if, if one side is farther down than the other, then go ahead and, and add um, a row, for example. I, I probably could add one, one more right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Pull 
pull it up and then put it down. That's probably a little bit more uniform, okay? So I'm gonna go through this nose and then I'm going to go down two rows. So there's the center and I'm gonna go down two rows, straight down. And I'm going to pull it through. And once I get it through, I'm gonna go back up to that point and I'm gonna go over it twice or over it once so that I have it, I have two strands. So back through there, pull this needle. I, I twist my bear all over the place when I'm working. And then I'm gonna go back up to center, but I'm going to come up about there. So you see where my needle's coming? I'm not right at the edge there. Um, <clears throat> let me grab a marker here. I'm not at the right at the edge here. I'm just like maybe one stitch over, half a stitch over, and just slightly up. I want it quite close to the to the circle actually. And I'm going to then take it down. So it's coming up through the middle of this stitch, and I'm going to let me see if I can get that in there. And I'm going to go one, two, like maybe three rows over three rows over and close to the, not three stitches over, but three of those single rows. And I'm going to just go down once, then I'm gonna go down again, and I'm gonna come over on the other side, much in the same place um, as what I just did on the opposite side, okay? And then I'm going to, yeah, that's perfect. Then I'm going to come down, let me see, one, two, about there, three, and go up. Don't pull too tight. You want it to just be snug, but not tight. And I had a, a little snag in my yarn, so I think I pulled it too tight. Then I'm going to go back down and out where I came in. That other needle that I use is much longer than this one, so it's much, much easier. I'm having a little bit of a struggle with this little needle, but that's okay. We're getting the work done and it looks great, okay? So I'm happy with that. I think that looks fantastic, actually. I'm going to tie off my ends, just like that, into a little knot. Don't pull too tight or you will tighten your eye and you don't wanna do that, okay?